RJ, oh, just. your boys are here in studio, <laughs> yes. okay? Um, it's July, and you're wearing velvet I mean, and fur. Well, look, just, today was I can't a even beautiful look. day. I came from summer league, so yeah. we're like, did you want to come? I heard that two of my favorite people uh -huh. are going to be hosting, but I yeah. had to bring my children. Unfortunately, they got to pick what I wore today. Uh, it's not that absurd. I've been there. It's this a little is, absurd. It's a little they absurd. They picked from my closet. So that's the problem. <laughs> so that, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, enough about that. We have so much to get into. Obviously, we'll get into Summer yeah. League, but um, we, we, we got to start out in the other desert. Yeah. That's Abu Dhabi. Team USA uh, had their second tune up game. This one versus Australia. Guys, still no Kevin Durant. Calf injury. He's day to day, according to Steve Kerr, LeBron James. Those boys, those boys look good. This is what I'm saying. You got to understand, Australia has their normal team. Canada's coming off, you know, playing so well last summer, and they have their same coach. This is a new group of guys that are figuring it out, and this is the time for them to figure it out. And Ant coming out, 14 points for him. I did like him in the starting lineup today. Mm. Again, knocking down the three. The thing I like about him in the starting lineup is he's great. The thing about him off the bench is he can be this guy. The starting lineup doesn't necessarily need that in that powerful score. The second unit might. They just play the whole game. Why not? Ah, well, there's a lot of other guys on that squad, too. <laughs> like, how about this guy, Steph Curry, for three? Mind you, they play the same position. Steph and Ann play the same position, Momo. So we got to figure Very out. differently. Very differently, yes. Look very, at the champ. Bully Ooh. ball. Ooh. That's the Jason Tatum that started dominating the paint through the postseason. And then Tatum would find Joel Embiid. Oh, the trail three. There's nothing you can do about the big foul. But Australia does have a lot of talent. Like when people see this this final score and they see the numbers, they don't understand. There's a lot of talent on that. How about Australian this ball side. movement? They're going to do it. That's part of the giving up of yourself. You got to move the ball when you're with Team USA. And in the third, Edwards again for the and one here. Ooh, ooh. Through four defenders. So, Momo, we don't have to get into it, but you like Ant in that lineup of versus do. Steph? Okay. I do. Well, okay. not versus Steph. Well, I'm saying, it's not versus, it's as opposed to. We can talk about that, and we can also talk about should AD be in the Ooh. starting lineup. We'll get into that maybe with Brian Windhorst later. Big dunk there. Now, they led by as much as 15 in the fourth quarter, but Australia, they chipped away at them. Patty Mills hits the three. Few plays later, Patty Mills for Australia <laughs> is just in a different stratosphere. Oh, he yeah. led the Olympics in scoring. A, yeah. uh, was it two Olympics ago? Like he Olympic is a Patty. Big, he is a different player for them. Yeah, and and Team USA they look sloppy in the fourth quarter. Turnovers. That's part of learning the system, learning your guys. Basketball is such a, a fluid sport that you're thinking before where your guys are going to go. So if you're not used to it, that's where the turnovers come from. And Halliburton. Help stabilize things at the end as Team USA won 98 to 92. They had another slow start, and that stood out again. The bench outscored the starters 54 to 44. The only starter with a positive point differential was Joel Embiid, and he played the fewest minutes of that group. But the United States continues to, you know, tinker as they win. They're trying to figure things out. That's what exhibition games are all about. All right, Brian Windhorst hey. is joining us now from Abu Dhabi. And, and Brian, you were up there front and center. What was your biggest takeaway from watching Team USA today? Some good, some bad, Cass. Um, you know, their offense looked smoother. Um, you know, they, they went with Ann Edwards in the starting lineup, and he gave them a real scoring punch. They had 12 three-pointers. There were stretches in this game where they were pretty much indefensible um, hitting those threes. And when they do that, they're going to be very hard to beat. But international basketball, so much of it comes down to interior play. You know, in the NBA, we're used to, you know, perimeter play dominating. In, in this type of game, interior play means everything. It's what cost the Americans the gold medal at the FIBA mm -hmm. World Cup last year. It's what put them on the on the ropes in Tokyo. And in this game, Australia puts up 68 points in the paint. Ooh. 68 points in the paint is a dangerous number in a 48-minute NBA game. In a 40-minute FIBA game where you are so dominant um, with your bigs, it's really concerning. And look, Anthony Davis has been the story of this team so far. Mm -hmm. He had 17 points and 14 rebounds in 18 minutes. Looked spectacular. They have the they have the capability inside. They lost their focus a little bit, and their game plan was a little bit exposed. And they're not really, you know, focusing too much on game planning right here. But I got to tell you, sitting up with me in the stands, 
was the Serbian national team. Mm. And Nikola Jokic came and sat in a regular seat, a three-time ah. MVP, um, to watch this game. Uh, they're, they're playing um, uh, against the Americans on Wednesday. And then yeah. in about eight or nine days, they're going to play them for real in, in uh, France. And I'm sure Jokic was watching that going, give me a shot at that interior. Because if they can't defend the interior better, they're going to have a, a smaller margin for air. No reason to be alarmed, but certainly some things to, to work on after this game. A, a Jokic scout. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, to, to, to his point, is there, do you have any concern that, you know, we always think Team USA should dominate? Um, well, that's what I was about to ask. What, what our expectations are for them at mm -hmm. this point? What are our expectations? What are we expecting? What are we expecting? We're expecting a group of guys that have not played together but are by far the most talented to spend this week of training camp, a couple of exhibition games, figuring out where they want to be, what's their best lineup. We talk about interior play, and, and I don't know when we're going to get into this, but if you want to talk about interior play, let's put out a lineup of Joel Embiid at, at the five, of Anthony Davis at the four, Kevin Durant at the three, Ooh. Jason Tatum at the two, and LeBron at the one. So now you're averaging Ooh. about 6'10 across the board. That's the lineup when people ask me what I want to see. That's wow. the biggest, most versatile, most athletic defensive lineup that maybe basketball has ever seen. We haven't gotten that, and Steve Kerr's not going to show all of his hands, but right now he's tinkering with the lineups. But my expectations are this. Last, last in the World Championships, they lost leading up to the World Championships. Yeah. They're working on things. This is a far better team. So some of those losses that they saw last summer, they're not seeing this summer. I think also they could tailor their style of play to the opponent. Mm -hmm. right? They don't have a style yet. I mean, when you play Australia, there's people talking about, okay, Embiid's on the trailer there. He doesn't look like he's getting up and down the way that Anthony Davis is. This is not the game you really need Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. You need him against Serbia. Mm -hmm. You need him against Germany. You need him to be that, that presence. There. But I, I also think you can tell who started playing a week ago and you can tell who started playing a month ago. Yeah, there's some guys that obviously <laughs> were playing to the finals. I know Braun took a week or two off yeah. and then went to start training like he always does. But then there's also guys like Joel Embiid that were coming off of an injury. Yeah. We saw uh, Kawhi Leonard was coming off of an injury mm -hmm. and tried to give it, give it a go. Joel Embiid is not going to be the, his best condition shelf, nor should he. He should use this as a time to ramp up, represent America, and then use Use this to kind of propel, uh, propel him into next season, in my opinion. Uh, look, Brian, you know, we're talking about how this is an ex exhibition game. This is where you're trying to figure things out. We know that, you know, the biggest thing that you're pointing out to improve on is interior play. But overall, if you had to give this performance a grade, what would it be? It'd be a C plus, but I, it's not really concerned. You know what Richard says was is true. Um, they've lost games like this in recent mm -hmm. summers, and you know Australia is a great litmus test for the U.S. because in 2019 and 2021, in friendly run-up games just like this, the U.S. lost to the Australians, mm -hmm. and then they were down 15 to them in the Olympics in 2021 in Tokyo, which almost was a loss. Durant saved them in that game. So the fact that, by the way, Australia was thrilled with the way that they played in this game. They loved it. They, they, were, they were prancing around, very excited. Mm. But the U.S. still won. So their margin for error is just much bigger than it was really definitely last summer, even bigger than 2021 Olympics. So on balance, I think you see that this team is really good. There are moments where they are completely unstoppable. And you just have to, you know, you see the other team wave the white flag. And there are probably more of those moments than the worrisome moments. But, you know, the interior play is the definition of the U.S. weakness. It is why they recruited Joel Embiid away from France and used a naturalized citizen as a vital part of this team. So in watching the interior play is very important as we get up to those games that count starting in France next week. So, RJ, obviously, yeah. we're grading on a scale here. So he's saying a C plus, but what do they have to be in order to win gold? Uh, I think if they play B-plus basketball, if they play B-plus basketball, they should win. My, mind you, it depends on your opponent how well they're playing. Canada has a loaded NBA roster. If they come out and give you a 50% from three, which is realistic, closer three-point line, that's realistic. So this, the, the U.S. has to shoot the ball well. That's part of the reason why I like Steph in that starting lineup. I know I yeah, talked about that. Space. Steph in that starting lineup with the space because LeBron is a shot creator. Anthony Edwards can go get a bucket, put the ball in his hands, and go play. They don't don't need that when you have LeBron yep. or KD. They need guys
guys. Who's going to distribute to those guys? You got Tyrese Halliburton, but I think Steph there with Braun, who's going to score, look for Steph. Then you put Tyrese Halliburton, who can manage, but then you let Anthony Edwards go be that scoring threat off that second unit. Here's the thing. I know, Brian, Brian you're right. Anthony, like Anthony Davis has been the, the story of Team USA so far, but Anthony Edwards might be that guy. Like, yeah. last year at Abu Dhabi, that is where he really distinguished himself. That's where they had a game against Germany, and it became his team. That was when Steve Kerr sort of anointed him, put him in the starting lineup today. You see him as this two-way player who knows this game, who knows the FIBA game, can space the floor, plays very good defense out on the perimeter, which is what that starting group really needs as a point of attack defender and can get to the hoop against anyone. I think this is where he distinguished himself last year, and it's where I think he takes another jump this year.